You boys look like a weird heavy metal band. <laughs> yes, we are a band. Really? Yeah. So what do you play? Symphonic, post-apocalyptic, reindeer grinding, Christ abusing, extreme war, pagan, fennoscandic metal. Right. Really interesting. <laughs> Maxine, your agent tells us you're quite a popular name in adult film and entertainment, is that correct? I'm curious, did you always want to be in that line of work? I always wanted to be famous. If you need to read off the sides we gave you, just go ahead, all right? I know the lines. She turns to the camera and through her trauma, addresses the lens directly. Name five celebrities who got their start in horror movies. Jamie Lee Curtis, John Travolta, Demi Moore, Brooke Shields, and... Maxine fucking Minx. I don't like walking out here with that freaking Night Stalker guy in the loose. The Night Stalker. Night Stalker. Night Stalker. He's terrorizing Los Angeles. I can handle myself. So said every dead girl in Hollywood. Maxine. I'm the private detective. I had to find you. My employer is a very powerful man. The past ain't finished with you. It's going to keep knocking at your door. Tragically, another victim of the Night Stalker. I knew three people who were murdered in three days. I'd be pretty scared. What are you hiding, Maxine? If I tell you something, we've got confidentiality. What'd you do? This is the defining role of your career. What was going on in your life that's interfering with this picture? Squash it. I intend to. Maxine! 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 You're a fucking movie star. And there you go. There's a trailer for Maxine, which is out now in theaters. I just checked it out the other day. Uh, man, it is good. Uh, so basically, directed by Ty West, cast consists of Mia Goth, Kevin Bacon, Elizabeth Debicki, Michelle Monaghan, just to name a few. Plot is a 1980s Hollywood adult film starring aspiring actress Maxine Minx. Finally gets her big break. But as a mysterious killer stalks the starlets of Hollywood, a trail of blood threatens to reveal her sinister past. Um, so basically, uh, what you kind of saw there, she walks into which is basically almost like this hangar of sorts in Hollywood, and she's auditioning for a role in Puritan 2, which is a sequel to a film that uh, a character played by Elizabeth Debicki is directing. Um now, at the same time during this period, this is, of course, based on some truth uh, with the Night Stalker uh, terrorizing L.A. at the time uh, in the 80s. And of course, the 80s full of the satanic panic, you know, with music. They were showing clips, actually, at the beginning, uh, even with Dee Snyder going into Congress and challenging the PMRC about the influence of messaging and music and stuff like that. So they had a lot of these cool clips, Reagan and stuff in there. Um, so the Night Stalker is out there, but then like we end up having what is these other killings. The These these young starlets are being killed, but they're being branded with like this uh, satanic symbol, the pentagram on their face or on their body somewhere. 
And, uh, you know, Maxine, of course, she's keeping busy. She's doing films and then she's trying to get into the mainstream now. So AKA kind of like Tracy Lords type thing, uh, to where she still dances a little bit. So some of the stars that she knows her friends, you know, they keep going to these parties up in the Hills and all of a sudden, you know, the, the following day, they're just, they're dead and they're found killed and, and branded and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, it concerns her. She actually befriended to one of these uh, young man, young black man who runs like a VHS video shop at the time. And they're pretty good friends. Uh, she ends up getting uh, in the in the mail a VHS copy of her scene from the porn film she filmed in X. Uh, now, if you don't know what happened there, I'm not I'm not going to have spoilers in this per se for this film, but I have to kind of go back to set the stage with the other two films that are in the series. So X basically has you know Maxine uh, being a young porn starlet, and they of course shoot their scenes at this sort of like farmhouse where these this old couple's allowed them to use their barn and stuff and like their uh guest house or something uh to you know chill and do this even though i don't think the old couple knew initially they were going to be doing porn but they just didn't they just you know it's for money so i don't think they care but if you knew if you saw x you know that the film itself turns out kind of weird uh with the the old lady uh kind of just freaking out and just a lot of violence starts happening it just gets really weird um so that kind of sets the stage now clearly maxine's the only one that gets out of that that film alive so she her character is the only one alive at this point with that but it kind of jumps to Pearl, which is done back in the day, like the 1918s with uh, a older version of her, just like ancestor of hers of Maxine called Pearl, who almost like Lizzie Borden, like killed off some people try to, to get famous. Like that the premise is similar, but just way back when. Um, so this VHS t- tape shows up to Maxine and she's like, she knows what it was and she's been trying to forget that part of her life which probably i think only took place like five or six years prior it was like a 70s uh vibe at the time uh, i can't remember the year that west put it in for that one but definitely 70s vibe um then you have a pair of detectives uh, one of them is a michelle monahan's character who are trying to solve these murders but they know that magazine is like the common denominator because she's known a lot of the people that are dying like the, the girls that are dying. So they keep trying to, you know, why aren't you trying to help us? You know, what is it, you know? And so all these people, like she even takes her VHS copy to her friend, uh, Leon, uh, at the VHS store to try to find out and track it where it came from. But the only thing you really give her is that the tape itself is like a rarity. It's like not something you would normally have, uh, like the mainstream tapes that you make copies of so uh, a little weird there with that uh just in terms of how the tape was caught and made or found uh but the detectives keep trying to get her to open up and explain or help them solve these murders uh so the violence in this and gore is pretty good like it does a really good job it's it's almost like your gallo type of films but not quite as um, not so much in the same vibe, but it, it definitely has the some similar vibe feel about it. Uh, great cinematography, like Ty did a wonderful job with incorporating the '80s feel and aesthetic to the film. Stylized, great soundtrack. I was, it wasn't that I just heard Rat, like which is my favorite '80s hair band. Uh, but I'm insane is like not a song that you would normally hear in the soundtrack. Like usually it's one of their main norm, uh, most notable songs that you would hear. So hearing that song was great. Hearing Priest, a song you wouldn't normally hear from uh, Prisoners in there. Well, uh, but then you had like the 80s pop stuff, which I'm, you know, I've told people before I'm a big fan of 80s pop. I grew up in that, that, that decade pretty much. Even though I was born in 70, I was more like an 80s kid when I came to like diving into music. 
So the 80s pop stuff is always a good pleasure. So you had Laura Branigan, ZZ Top, Anna Motion, uh, John Parr, Kim Carnes, uh, just a lot of great songs to, to fill the soundtrack with. Um, this film, without a doubt, is the best of the trilogy. It's the best. Like prior to this, I could have just said ho hum. Um, X was okay, good. Pearl was okay, but not as good as X. So I was like, you know, I wasn't blown away by either film really all that much. Uh, while I still wouldn't like score this like a 10 out of 10, it's at least an eight or a nine. So if I had to really go back, I'd give like Pearl six and X maybe a seven, but this is definitely eight or nine. It's much better than the other two. Uh, it's mainly because there's a lot more attention to detail. And so Ty did a really good job with that, with how the aesthetic looks. Like you see, there's a scene with um, Maxine kind of coloring the, the, the shade almost that really captures the eighties vibe at the time with the punk and the new wave stuff. Um, now the, the thing is like Maxine is almost like a direct sequel to X because it, it's a short period. So we, we definitely have the same character that's now a few years later. So there's a, there's a direct tie in to her past. The problem now Lee means that Pearl is kind of left out on its own Island as far as the, you know, the uh, sequels go, like it, 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 you could have done without it. It wouldn't have mattered. Like it doesn't really tie in anyway, except for just Mia Goth being in there. Um, what I probably would have done if I was Ty, I would have made X and then Maxine. And then I probably would have done Pearl last as a prequel. But then the girl, young girl, I don't know her last name, but her first name's Charlie. She portrays a young Maxine in old videotapes that you'll see at the beginning of the film and throughout uh, where she's trying to please her dad. who's a big Christian dude, right? Um, but... Cause, you know, it, it's similar in the sense that Pearl was always trying to be like a stage star in her own right, right? So it's kind of the same thing. Like Maxine's always wanting to be a singer and a star and stuff. So it's kind of a cute thing with the young girl. But I would have probably done is taken that actress, even if you do Pearl now, like have her portray a young Maxine to set up X, like, which would have been great because it would have fit in perfectly. Like, unfortunately, Pearl just doesn't fit in to anything like directly. So it's like, like I said, it's on its own Island. So it doesn't really work, but Maxine is a lot of fun. Um, like I said, just for the aesthetics and the style and the cinematography alone, soundtrack is great. So fun. Uh, just hits the marks. Um, it has a little bit of, hiccups here and there like the ending isn't what you really expect i mean obviously there's some but uh some of the things i didn't expect to happen happened which was cool um so it has its own kind of twist there at the end but uh yeah so i just you know i probably have to go check it out again uh just to kind of regain my thoughts on it but uh i i loved it man i thought it was great it was really fun unexpected i, I, I kind of went in with lower expectations because of the first two films but came out very very uh pleased with this it just hits all the marks that you need uh so it does kind of leave the open for more if he wants to continue on uh which in some ways he could do another prequel using the theory that i said about the young girl uh, which would be more apt for the trilogy than Pearl. Pearl just doesn't really fit unless he's going to expand on that particular character, uh, and like on a side thing or whatever. Like, you know, you could do that. But as far as like this film, it's really great. And I think that people will join it. But I definitely recommend going and watching X first. And I don't know if it's on Tubi or anything like that might be on Canopy, uh, which is sort of like a, it's an app on the Roku that's sort of like, you, you don't necessarily need a library card, but they always kind of ask, but all you have to do is just sign up for it and you can get in. They have a lot of like, you know, is it like, um, what is it? Bo, Bo is Afraid, like that's on there. Uh, everything at where, everywhere at once is on there. So it has some kind of newer films that you just don't find anywhere else, like Netflix and all that right now. So uh, and it's free. 
So like, and there's no commercials or nothing. So it's great. And they have a lot of good old school horror stuff on there too. So it's called Canopy, K-O-N-A-P-Y. Um, I think X might be on there and Pearl too. I, I, I saw them somewhere. Either that two B might have them. I don't remember, but uh, they're definitely out. But I would check out X first and then go watch this because they are directly connected as far as films go. So uh, anyway, um, I'll probably do another video at some point tomorrow. Uh, not sure what I'm gonna do yet, but I'll give a more update on what's coming up. I'm trying to set things up. Uh, I definitely want to do a Brotherhood of the Wolf review with a panel of people. So I'm trying to get together some guys and maybe gals that want to talk about that movie because, you know, it's something that needs to be explored. It's that and The Crow, my two favorite movies. We did one for The Crow where uh, Jedi Vale got a chance to watch it for the first time. So we got to break down the legacy of that film as well as get his thoughts on how he felt about it. Uh, and he had some cool things to say about why he hadn't he waited so long. So that was so. If you haven't seen that video that we did, check it out. It's pretty good. Anthony Jordan's on there as well. Uh, but yeah, check out Maxine. I uh, definitely go support this. It's a good film, and uh, independent artists need you. All right, is is Ty West still independent? I guess I don't know. He's sort of famous now, so maybe he's more mainstream. I don't know. Either way, support the film. It's good, uh, and I'll see you next time on the Metal Ray Podcast. Just a bit for your time.